flowers like glaciers Pretty like great chasing I've become complacent What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's good to see everybody and I hope that everyone is doing well. Today I have some repotting to do and I can't wait to show you the plants that I have to deal with today. Uh, one of them is having a complete fit and the others are some recent new plants that I received that I haven't had the opportunity to plant up yet. So please keep watching. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, here's the first plant that I need to repot today. This is my Philodendron Gloriosum. I think this is one of the more easier crawling plants. And for some reason for me, this plant is always kicking my ass. I don't know <laughs> what it wants. It's like once it starts doing good, then it starts looking like this. And then look at this. I just walked by and the leaf was you know, on the table. This is like a, a seven inch clear pot. I put it in here because at the time it only had two leaves, which was the leaf that fell off in this one. And I wanted to give it an opportunity to establish its roots. At one point I did have her in uh, one of my XOs and she was thriving. She was doing so well. She got way too big for it and I had to pull her out. When I took her out, she had like maybe six or seven leaves. It was beautiful. If I have a clip of when I first took her out, I'll go ahead and insert the picture. Go ahead and get her out this pot. I'm gonna be putting her in a uh, long planter if I haven't already said that. And I have some soil that I need to mix up for her. And she's actually been doing pretty good. She has some good roots growing in. These are the roots that's growing at, through the bottom of the pot. And look, she's even growing a new leaf. And I hate to repot her while she's growing a new leaf, but since she's a crawler, I know she's gonna need more space because if you can see in the top of this pot, she doesn't really have anywhere else to go. So let's just, let's just see what she can do. This is the potting mix that I have for her. I just have some cocoa chips at the bottom, some orchid bark and some perlite. So let's go ahead and take her out of this pot. Ooh, it came right out. And I also want to say that I have some new items that I'm going to be adding to my shop here in the near future. I have maybe three or four more items that I'm going to add that I hope you all will like. And please give me feedback on that as well. What I add is something you're interested in or if there's anything that you would like to see on my shop, please let me know that as well. So I can try to see if I can get that for you all. But this is her clear pot. It's not my normal pot that has the... Um, slits in it with the very good airflow but I felt like she needs something that was a little bit wider at the top to give her some room to crawl and she didn't at the time when I put her in here she didn't have very many roots and wasn't established enough to go in anything bigger than this. Break this off. It's not doing nothing for her. Do you guys have this plant? How are you growing this plant? Like, do you have any problems with spider mites or humidity problems? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to know. I see people growing this plant and saying that it's the easiest plant. <laughs> and I just have so many problems with it. I don't know what it is. And it's more of the bug thing. It's the bugs. And also when it have high humidity, the um, leaves get stuck in the petiole. It, it doesn't unfurl on its own. I have to kind of give it a little help. And sometimes by the time I catch it, like for example, this one was beautiful at one point, but by the time I noticed it was growing a new leaf, it was already stuck in the um, petiole and it tore coming out. And I just, I hate that for her. She was living in this window because I wanted her to be in a warm spot to, um, be able to grow her roots a little quicker since I had to completely chop her and start her all over. I kind of want to do that again. At the back end, she has all this space with no leaf growing on it, but the back node also has roots as well. So I think she would be pretty good if I tried to go ahead and grow her by herself. And I think I'm gonna do that. And the last time I propagated her before um, putting her in this box, I had cut her back node off and repotted it, but it was, it didn't, 
it wasn't filling it. I don't know what's up with it. But look at this, you guys. I got this from Total Wine. I don't know if you've ever seen these, but I collect the cigar boxes. And I just decided to put some of my handy plant items in it because sometimes I keep losing my scissors, my plant clips. And I have a place that I keep all my stuff, but I needed something over here where I filmed to keep all my little knickknacks. So I am gonna cut this baby. So that means I'm gonna have to break up more of her roots than I really wanted to, but I ain't tripping. And I would like the opportunity to kind of have another piece of her just in case, I don't know, this other half starts bugging out on me. I just need to see where her roots are coming from. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop her right here. I don't know if these scissors are gonna cut it. Ooh! So I chopped her. I wasn't planning on cutting her, but I wanna see if I can kind of grow another piece to have a little bit of security with this plan. I just think she's always giving me hell and I don't wanna lose her. I think this was the first Gloriosa I ever bought and it was so pretty when I first got it and the leaves were nowhere near this size and I was just so happy. And now look at me struggling with this dang on plant. But it's okay, I'm gonna keep trying. That's one thing I am gonna do because I really love this plant. I love the shape of the leaves, but it just don't love me back. Let me tell you, don't be handling this um, perlite like this inside. I had already pre-sifted this outside earlier and I had this stuff all over me. I'm already having sinus problems. This stuff was in my nose and my throat. Please be careful when you're handling perlite because it'll sneak up on you. Um, you know how they say, do what I say, not as I do. I'm so sorry, I hate saying that, but it's so true. Do you see all of it flying around? And since I just chopped her, her back piece, I'm not going to water this right away. I'm just trying to get off all this old soil because I'm not reusing it. I think the soil is playing me as well. And I don't like these games. But you know, sometimes these kids, these plant kids be having a temper tantrum and you just kind of Got to get them in line and give them what they need and see if they'll straighten up a little bit and start acting right. So here's the planter I'm going to put her in. I think it's 14 inches long. Um, it's not as long as I'd like, but I think it'll be perfect for her just since she's already acting a fool. I don't want to put her in a super long one if it doesn't work out for her. And what I like about this planter is that it's long and it's also pretty deep. It has the water indicator on here, but it's the good one. It's the one that doesn't pop off. It's the one that doesn't get stuck after you fill water in it because I've noticed with some of these Lechuza knockoff self-watering planters, I noticed that sometimes the water indicator will get stuck showing that it's full of water and you check the reservoir and it's actually empty. That sucks. I'm going to go ahead and start filling up the bottom of the planter with some of this mix I made. So let me kind of situate her to where she's kind of low. I don't want her to be too high and also I don't think she would like, uh, she doesn't need all of that. I think this scoop is going to take me forever. So I switched over to this to-go container because it's much bigger. I'm just going to see if it works a little better. Because I'm going to be here all day trying to get this out. I'm going to make sure the part where I'm planting her down in is very secure. And once she starts establishing her roots in here, she's going to find her way. I might need to go get a stick. Oh, look at that. She's standing up by herself. Look at this. Here she is all potted up. She doesn't even really need a stake or anything. I'm really, I'm really shocked. The way she's just standing in here. 
because I would think that this mixture would be too light and airy to hold down a plant that's not completely um, root bound in the mixture, but I'm wrong. Let me show you uh, what she looks like in the pot if I can. So these are her leaves. They're so pretty, you know? And this is her in her pot. And I'm also, before I forget, let me stop flailing her around like this. I'm gonna add some of this in there as well. I mean, I guess it's okay to fight spider mites, but you don't wanna be fighting thrips, that's for sure. I don't. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. This is not the one that's open. What is wrong with me? So I have two of these systemic um, insect control things and this one wasn't open. The other one is outside. I've been trying to treat some of my uh, calicasias that are outdoors that get thrips real bad or some kind of bug that be tearing it up. And this always helps, especially with my outdoor plants, but let me see. So like I said, I'm just gonna eyeball it. It might be too much, but hell, I, f I don't wanna be fighting no dang on no uh, thrips. I'm gonna take the stick that was in her before and just kind of mix this down into her soil just a little bit. And for her first watering, I'm gonna water her from the top so that all this insect control uh, granules can get down in there. Normally I just put it in the water reservoir so it gets sucked up, but I'm just gonna put it directly in the substrate today because I really don't wanna take no, no chances or no, sh no shortcuts. This plant is taking me through enough. I love this. I love the way this turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray her leaves down at the sink, of course. Treat her for the bugs that I can currently see on her. And hopefully the granules rep rep will prevent any other bugs from coming for her. But I really love this planter so much. I can't wait to see her uh, fill it up if she continues to grow. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the piece that I cut in this uh, five and a half inch pot here. Dang, this piece in the back had more roots than anything, which is very surprising. Hopefully it'll grow a few new growth points for me. I don't have a lot of success trying to, you know, propagate these gloriosums. They just, they just don't really like me. I bet you I won't buy another one. At one point I had two of them and you see what I'm left with. Just getting played left and right. But that's okay, every plan is not gonna work in your conditions and even the ones that are so-called easy for so many other people are not always gonna work out for you. But you know, it doesn't hurt to try. And it doesn't hurt if you're not like spending buku buku money on it. Now that sucks. This thing is full of the old dirt. I don't want none of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold this up. I'm just gonna hold this up while I backfill the rest of the pot with this soil mix I made. So the roots are not compacted. Like all the roots have the opportunity to get some water and have the same amount of aeration. I don't want them clumped up all together in here. Okay, I think this is getting too big. And with this chunk that is left over, I really don't want it sitting underneath the substrate. I don't mind the other piece of the plant sitting, you know, deep under the substrate because it's actually crawling and it has growth, it has leaves on it. I don't want this to rot or anything sitting under the substrate. So I'm just gonna let it be propped up on top if I can. And with, just like the other plant, I'm gonna go ahead and just let this, the end that I cut callus a little bit before I, I completely water the plant. I'm just using this uh, good end of this chopstick to kind of fill in the air pockets just a little bit. Just a little bit. The plant already don't like me, I don't wanna piss it off. 
so this is what that looks like and this is what it looks like in the pot with this soilless uh, mix that I put together. And I hope it starts thriving really soon. Here's the next plant I'm gonna be repotting. It's my baby Albo. She is so cute. She has a new leaf coming in. And I'm not gonna disturb her root system whatsoever. I'm just gonna pull her out of this small container and put her into a pot and add a moss pole to her. Can you see this long aerial root she's shooting out? And she also has crazy aerial roots inside of this cup. It's like wrapping around the top. So I'll be repotting her next. And I'm gonna try to take very, very, <laughs> I'm gonna try to be very careful. This plant intimidates me a little bit. It's so beautiful, but it's so small and, <sighs> I love the variegation on this plant and I do not want to piss it off whatsoever, whatsoever. Again, look at this. This is me documenting how pretty it looks before anything goes left, which I hope doesn't. And I just hope it goes up from here. So this is a boba cup I just put her in. She came in a much smaller cup and I don't know why I just didn't put her in something more appropriate when I got her. Yo, this is not coming out and I don't want to. Ooh, it came right out. Okay. So this is the little pot she came in. Look, I mean, it's not a pot, it's a cup. So this is the little cup she's in right now. Her roots look amazing. I'm so proud of her. I hope you can see how good her roots look because I mean, they're giving, they are giving. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump her in this tray and I'm gonna use this mix that I use for the Gloriosum as well because she is in like a very heavy perlite soil mix. And I'm not gonna take any risk trying to convert her over to Lekka. Her aerial roots are crazy. They are crazy. So I'm just gonna squeeze the cup very gently to not break any roots and hopefully she just pops she just pops out, okay? No, she's not. Okay. Okay, there she goes. Okay, she's out. And this is her little root ball. I'll be planting her in this four inch uh, plant pot here. This is so tiny, it's so cute. Let me see. I wanna get all these aerial roots in the substrate and then this big fat juicy one here, I'm gonna put it in the uh, moss pole. And this is the moss pole I'm testing out and I will be using with her. It has like a honeycomb grid on the front of it and it's something that you kinda have to just easily assemble. I thought it would be a good idea to test on something really small. And with this having a plastic back, I thought it'd be really good for the Monstera because in my experience with Monsteras and moss poles, yes, they climb very, very well on my moss poles, but sometimes the aerial roots just, they're aggressive. Uh, they'll just shoot right through the moss pole. Of course, it's happy in the parts that is touching the moss pole, but sometimes I have them kind of eh, poking out. And I feel like even once it gets big, this won't be a bad um, option to extend. Uh, in the future. If I thought this plant needed something more substantial, I would definitely use my steel uh, moss pole because most of my plants are on them, especially the philodendrons because they attach to the moss pole so well. And I'm not talking about these. They actually grow into the moss poles, the other ones that I make, very well. They stay within the pole. So stay with me here. I guess it would be a good idea for well, my crazy self. I'm trying to laugh at myself, but sometimes I can't help it. This side seems like it's the most dirty right now. It's been sitting on this table. I'm gonna put the moss pole in the pot first. I'm gonna tilt the pot this way so that I can easily put some of this mix into the bottom of this pole. Okay. I like to have my poles at the very, very back of the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make sure whatever's at the bottom of the pot is situated pretty well. 
Let's get this baby here. Don't start. Gonna go ahead and see how far down she'll go. I do not wanna disturb the roots. And I'm gonna try my best to tuck this aerial root that's sticking out in the moss pole and just fill that up in a moment. Oh my God, if I break it, I'm gonna cry. I feel like it could go higher. Okay, no higher than that. I be pushing it, I be pushing it. Now when it breaks, I'm gonna be sitting here crying. Let's just see if she'll work with me. Cause this is a very straight aerial route. She's doing pretty good though. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some plant clips that I have in here. I think she only needs one, but I'll grab two so I don't have to go back in this box. So I was able to get the aerial route in the, the pole. Go ahead and clip the plant to the the pole so I can start uh, back filling the pot. And I also am going to try to get all the aerial roots that was growing above the substrate in to this pot to where it comes in contact with the uh, the mix without breaking anything because where's my stick? because that's the story of my life. So that one went in there very easily. This one, not so much. I think that's pretty stable. I think I'm really testing my luck, putting the aerial root up so high, but I want as much of it to be covered with something so it can grow a bigger root system within the pole. Okay. Now I think it's safe for me to attempt to backfill it. And I cannot wait to see what this is gonna look like when I'm done. I'm telling you, I'm so excited to repot her. I just wanna make sure it doesn't have very many air pockets around the little root ball it has since I'm not, I'm not willing to break up the, the root ball because it has a new leaf growing in. And I'm really babying this plant, so there's no way I'm just gonna be like, ah, oh, screw it. Nope. It's the elbows world right now. I'm not gonna play games with her. <laughs> but if she was a bigger, more established plant, I wouldn't really be worried, because my fake elbow, I don't know if you've seen the video of me chopping her up, you would not believe all, um, all the pieces that I cut have new leaves growing in and the roots are going crazy. And I'm just like, you better go. I'm so proud of her because I had to chop her up because um, I don't know if you, please go watch the video, but just kind of give you like a little insight of what I'm talking about. Like I had accidentally left her in the garage when it was really cold and she suffered. And then I put her outside instead of bring, bringing her back in the house. It was just like, she probably was like, can I catch a break here? Are you gonna keep treating me like this? So I chopped her up. I really was, I didn't even care because at that point I felt like it was better than just, you know, where she, her current state. So she's doing very good right now. One of the pieces is actually growing outside in some pretty high light and it's doing well. I'm so proud of her. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this pole with this mix instead of using moss. And just see how it likes it. Cause I really don't wanna fill it up all the way to the top. I don't even think it needs all of that. So, cause it's so small, but the, that one fat aerial root that's in here, I wanna make sure that it's covered with something. And I have some moss ready, but I don't want to use it on this plant. I kind of feel like her root in here could be covered a little bit better, but I guess I got to put some of these chunks in the right places since it's so chunky. And it's very possible that it's not even all settled in here. Hold on. And this moss pole adjusts to four different sizes, I believe if not four or three, and I put it on the, the smallest one because I didn't think it really needed much more than that. Let me go get a, a, a real, uh, let me go get a longer stick. 
if you order plants online and if you're not already doing this when someone includes these bamboo stakes in there to make sure the plant doesn't move around or for whatever reason it's in there for the specific plant do yourself a favor if you're not already doing this go ahead and save them i have so many of them and they always come in clutch i ain't gonna lie okay Feel like she's starting to get a little crooked hold on girl don't start chipping on me i think i have the area root that's in the the pole covered pretty well so i'm just going to go ahead and just fill it up just a little bit more so you know the next node has somewhere to go because i can already see where it's growing there's there's nothing there okay i think she turned out very very well man what more can you ask for she's such a cute little baby oh man i love this can you see the variegation on her i'm so in love look at this leaf i hope it's showing up because it's very very bright in here right now but that's my baby monstera elbow in her new pot with her new moss pole so hopefully you've seen my previous video that I have posted, but if you haven't, I got these philodendron plants. They're so beautiful. Hold on, I'm missing a glove. These philodendron plants, um, I found them in the Kroger and I bought one originally and it was so pretty. I was kind of like, dang, I should have got some more. But at the time, you know, they was regularly priced. So later on, of course, being the plant person I am, I went back to check and see if they still had them. And guess what? They were on sale. I almost got two more instead of one more. But to be honest with you, I just got one that didn't look like the one I already had. So let me let me show them to you. I have them just sitting in water. I didn't know if I wanted to put them in LECA or Pond, but I think I'm going to do LECA today. So also um if the light keeps changing while i'm recording this part of the video i'm sorry um the sun is moving so yeah here's one of them and look at her can you see this is her newest leaf here beautiful beautiful i took her out of the water and i can see that they're growing some water roots so i think they're about ready to be potted up so here's the next one sitting in water as well so i'm gonna go ahead and pot these babies up in lecca i'm so glad i went back and got another one i was even on tiktok and seen some people who had them in their stores for like seven bucks i was like dang that's a good deal but you know it's no telling where they are in the world well every area has its different price point or what they sell anything so i ain't tripping about that but i thought that was so nice for them to be able to find that plant so cheap i'm gonna put them in this four inch pot since they're so small and i found these cute little um clear containers that these fit in perfectly i love that i've been really into these these clear um little buckets for my my pots because i the whole point of having clear pots is to be able to see what the roots are doing see how healthy they are and when i have my clear pots in like a cover pot or you know what i'm saying a ceramic pot it's just a very easy way for me to forget about checking on the root system because i don't move my plants very much at all because they're most of them are very big and I have a lot of them and I don't want to be spending a lot of time, you know, pulling them out the pot just to check their roots. So I love having this clear cover pot on the pot. Let me show you a bigger one I have. So this is my uh, chia pens that I had recently repotted. She's on a D-shaped moss pole that I sell and she's also in my uh, six inch clear pot. She's growing crazy, but if you'll notice that she's in one of these clear um, outer containers as well. I find these on Amazon and they come in packs of like six or something, I believe. And I love them. I think they're better than using these here, but don't don't get me wrong. It's easier to get a lot of these versus a lot of these clear containers. And when you have a lot of plants, I know nobody wants to spend money on getting a lot of these, but 
some of the plants that I recently repot, especially if I'm transitioning them from soil, I want to be able to just kind of always see their roots. So that's just me and it gives me a little bit of security. She's grown a few new leaves since I potted her up like this and she's doing great. She was growing in water. She's so pretty. She grows so fast though, like her roots are already at the, the bottom of the um, pot. I don't know, she's just thriving and I, I, I love that because, you know, I don't want my plants to be pissed off. So let's go ahead and get started with some of this. I'm gonna put these philodendrons on the clear moss poles that I just put the uh, Monstera Albo on. Also, I found these smaller inner pots. I found these at Hobby Lobby. I think they were like a dollar, but they were just randomly sitting somewhere. I was like, you know what? I can use this for my plants. Who doesn't ever walk by something and think that? I know I do. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling um, the bottom of the pot and the bottom of the moss pole with Lekka. Um, I'm sure this is going to be very loud, so I'm just going to go ahead and probably put some music on. So enjoy.
Okay, here are my two uh, philodendrons with white variegation. I went ahead and added some moss to these poles and I'm gonna go ahead and put them um, probably in my XO. If I don't put them in the XO, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my Rudsta. I'm getting ready to reorganize the Rudsta because it's getting out of hand and I think I could maximize the space in that cabinet a lot more than what I'm using it for right now. So. Hopefully that video will be coming up very soon. And I wanna say thank you so much for watching my video today. If you haven't already, please go ahead and check out some of the other videos that I have on my channel. I think you'll like it very much. And also, if you have any suggestions of any other videos that you would like to see on my channel, please leave it in the comments and let me know. And I'll see you next time. Flowers like glaciers, pretty like great chasing.